Hello my quilting friends! My name is Leah Day and welcome to this quilting tutorial for Quilt As You Go. This is basically a quilting technique that allows you to quilt your blocks separately, makes them a lot more manageable on a small home sewing machine, and then you can trim them down, bind them together to create your finished quilt. So we're gonna be working on the quilt behind me. This is Hugs and Kisses. It's a huge quilt created by huge blocks and you can find the quilt pattern in my book, Explore Walking Foot Quilting. So let's get started learning how to prepare our blocks, trim them down and start connecting them together to create this beautiful quilt. So let's get started connecting our blocks together. The very first step is to measure the finished size of your block and mark that square shape, whatever it is. In this case, you can find the size for the Hugs and Kisses quilt in the book, Explore Walking Foot Quilting with Leah Day. So definitely check that out. So you're gonna wanna mark that square size, then take it to your machine and you're gonna stitch on that marked line, then an eighth of an inch inside of it, so into the quilt, and then a line of stitching between the two. And what that does, it just creates a nice, stable, secure edge. It really makes it firm and easy to control the quilt itself. It's gonna make it so much easier to bind the blocks together and so much easier to bind the edges of the finished quilt. So no matter whether I am doing a quilt as you go quilt like Hugs and Kisses or a bigger quilt like Rainbow Log Cabin, I always do that extra victory lap stitching around the edge. So now let's talk about trimming this block up and making it nice and trim and square. So I've already done that victory lap stitching and now it's time to cut the block and cut all this extra fabric off. So this is a huge block size and I don't have a ruler that's big enough to cut the whole thing. So I'm gonna have to buddy two rulers up together. So I did the math. I added the two rulers together and I placed a piece of tape here. So that way it would mark out and stop me from cutting too much or too little. <laughs> it's one of those definite situations where you want to measure twice, cut once. And so I'm just centering this up nicely. And the piece of tape really helps because visually I can line that up with that outer victory lap stitching. And I can also see this outer edge over here and I'm left-handed so I'm gonna be cutting left. If you're right-handed, obviously you'd be cutting along the other edge. And here's a question I get asked a lot about that victory lap stitching. Why did we stitch? exactly on the line when basically I'm kind of cutting that off. You can see here, I'm kind of trimming that off. The reason is, you know, how else would I know what the outer edge of the quilt is, number one, and then number two, that's why we stitch inside of it two times. Sometimes I find that the victory lap doesn't get cut off because that many lines of stitching actually shrinks the block slightly, and so it doesn't get cut off but that's why we have two more lines of stitching. That edge is still nice and secured. It's not going anywhere. And trimming off that outermost line is not a big deal. I like having it there just simply so I know exactly where that outline of the block should be. So you can see my rotary cutter is just a little dull. I might have to take a few passes. I need to get some more blades out here. That's something I'm always telling myself. Okay, so we've got one line trimmed. I'm gonna rotate the block around. I don't cut across the top of my ruler. I always cut with my dominant hand up the side of the ruler. I got cut once really badly trying to take some shortcuts with my rotary cutter and it wasn't pretty. <laughs> Let's just say that much. So here I'm lining up a thin line on my ruler across the bottom edge that I've just cut. So I know that that line is nice and straight. And then I'm lining up right here on the tape with the outer victory lap stitching. I buddy up my other ruler and when I'm buddying up I'm just making sure these two rulers are locked together nice and tight. This looks really good. I'm really pleased with how it's coming together. And then I'm just going to make this cut. And because my mat is also not big enough for the ruler and the block, I'm going to have to shift it. So this is a lot of shifting and this is one of those things that quite honestly had I thought about this kind of repercussion of these humongous blocks, I probably would have designed them smaller. I will be completely perfectly honest with you because I know that this is not going to be quite as accurate as it could be. It's not going to be, there's no way. Not with moving the block 
shifting the rotary cutter and shifting the rulers this way, it's just not going to be dead set absolutely 100% the right size. However, because all of the blocks are going to be cut the same way with the same system, hopefully they will all be consistently off the same way. And that means that they'll still go together nicely. And there is some wiggle room within this quilt as you go technique. So it doesn't have to be 100% dead on accurate. And I'm gonna show you some methods of kind of fudging <laughs> If things aren't going together just exactly right, I'll show you how to kind of fudge it and get away and hide your mistakes if things aren't quite lining up right. Because as you can see, even I'm having to kind of cobble things together in order to cut these blocks. And I'm making it up as I go along, you know? This is the Hugs and Kisses quilt that's in the actual book. So as I'm showing you this, I'm learning myself. So I hope that that makes sense. And uh, I think we're gonna learn something really awesome together. So here I'm lining up again, just making sure that line is lined up all the way along that edge, making sure that my rulers are nicely locked together all the way down. And if you ever notice that things are kind of slightly getting off or kind of tilted, watch out for that, you know, especially these big rulers. I find the big rulers really like to slip. So I've got a lot of grippy material on the back of that big ruler that really helps. And I'd say, you know, uh, whether it's Invisigrip or some kind of like grippy dots, we have true grips in the store, you know, whatever you need in order to make sure that the ruler isn't gonna slip on you. All right, this is looking good enough. Sometimes you just have to go with good enough and that's okay. It's not gonna be exactly perfect. And that's all right. I think it's still gonna make an excellent quilt. And here's another tip. I'm using binding that's the same color as my background fabric as this Bermuda, um, it's kind of green, green batik. And that because I'm using the same binding color, it's not going to stand out very much if my joins where the blocks join together are a little bit off. It's not going to be like a glaring mistake uh, or issue because the fabrics are gonna kind of blend subtly together and I think we'll be able to get away with it. I think it'll be okay. Okay, so this is the last side. Just carefully trim it up. Shift it one more time. And we will be ready to start connecting everything together. So now I wanna show you kind of a little overview of what our finished quilt looks like with this technique. And you can see these are such massive blocks. Uh, you know, they are a little bit of a pain to cut down, but oh my gosh, as they're coming together, I really love the effect. So this technique adds a binding strip and that's what we use to connect the blocks together. And so this is gonna have an effect to show a half inch binding strip on the front of the quilt and you're also gonna see that on the back of the quilt as well. And another cool thing that you can do is kind of change up your backing fabrics. In this case, I have this mottled batik on one side and this bright red batik on the other and then this bright green strip down the middle. Not quite sure how that's gonna look yet, but you know what? The back of the quilt is the back and I was just using up fabrics that I had on hand. So this is gonna be something that you wanna think about if you wanna do different colors for the front and the back. Uh, I do like to match my thread color to the front binding. So whatever I stitch here, try and match the thread color to that. So that way it blends in nicely. But that's basically how we're going to connect these blocks together. So knowing that, the next step is to prepare our binding strips and start putting these blocks together. To bind our blocks together, you're gonna to need two binding strips. The back binding is gonna be one inch wide. Then you're gonna need some front binding that is an inch and a half wide. Take it and fold it in half. And before cutting this binding, make sure to starch and press your fabric at least two times before cutting. You don't want any wiggle, any give in this fabric. You want it to be stiff and stable so that way you can control it and it will behave. And don't worry, that starch will wash out completely after your quilt is finished and you can wash it. So here's how we're going to stack this together. You place your back binding strip on the bottom and I cut mine a little extra long 
So that way I can overhang it like this so I don't have to be working right off the edge of the block. So I overhang it about a half of an inch, put the quilt block in the center, and you can see I've already done that victory lap stitching so it's nice and secure and it's been trimmed down exactly square. And then I place my fr folded front binding on top with the raw edges to the right side. So all of that is stacked up together. Now you'll take this to your machine and stitch this with a quarter inch seam allowance. Now as you're stitching, make sure that none of these layers slip out of place. So as I'm stitching this, I'm constantly checking, I'm constantly fiddling with it to make sure they all stay in one nice line and it's accurately stitched a quarter of an inch away from that edge. So here's what this looks like after you've stitched the binding in place. You can see we've got the folded front binding and then we've got that nice straight back binding. So flip the block over and then now we're going to take that back binding and flip it over and just finger crease it nice and flat. Now we're not going to do anything with that folded front binding yet. Just ignore it. We're only working with the back binding. So make sure that's nice and crisply pressed. If you want to, you can take an iron and press it, but honestly, finger creasing is usually plenty. So that looks good. That back binding is nicely folded over. And when you flip the block back over to the right side, you can see that back binding is extending a half of an inch out beyond the block. And that's exactly what you want. You want that extending just like that. So now I'll grab the next block in the series so I piece these together in rows. So just refer to the pattern to know the order of the blocks and how everything goes together. So grab the next block and take it and flip it over so it's right side down. Then place this block where you have attached the binding and you're going to put that and place it on top and line it up so that the back binding is aligned with the edge of that block. So you want to take a minute here to line up that back binding with the edge of the block and also line up the top edges. You don't want it to have one block extending beyond the other. You want them forming a nice straight line. And this is another reason why I like the binding strips to extend beyond the edge of the block. It always goes wonky when you try and cut that too close. So I like it when they extend and I can start stitching out here and get onto that fabric and stitch through all layers really accurately. So take this to your machine, keep everything lined up, and you are just stitching through the back binding piece and the next block in the row. And you piece that together with a nice quarter inch seam allowance all the way down. So I've completed that line of stitching and now both blocks are connected together. So let's flip it on the back and I can show you what this looks like. You can see we've already got that half inch channel here on the back of the quilt and I'm going to run my fingers along it and what that does is it encourages the seam allowances from both blocks to nest together and lay flat. So let's flip it over to the front and take a look at it. Now if you notice that the seam allowances are kind of bulky and not really budding together the way they should, that's a sign that your seam allowance is just a little bit big. So watch out for that. If you need to, just flip up and trim a little bit from both seam allowances and then they'll lay nice and flat. So now the next step is to start folding over that folded front binding. So this is a nice folded edge here. And what I'm gonna do is just start creasing and folding that over so that way it fully encases those seam allowances. Let me zoom in, I can really show you this in good detail. So here's the seam allowance from both blocks. And I just make sure that those are kind of budding up together, just nested there in that little channel and that groove created by the back binding. And then I take the front binding and fold it over. Now this line of stitching, you can see it's, it's light green. It's the same color as the fabric. I wanted it to blend in, but that's the line of stitching that connected this block to the back binding. So this binding piece should fold over to hit that line. So give it a good finger crease. If you want to, you could glue this down. That's certainly open to you. You know, that will definitely hold it in place uh, long enough for you to get some stitching into it. 
And as far as securing this edge, there's lots of different options. You can zigzag stitch this down, that will secure it. You can hand stitch it down, just a little whip stitch, one stitch into the block, one stitch into that folded edge. Personally, I like a straight stitch. I think that looks best. I just run about an eighth of an inch from that edge with a straight stitch down the block. And then to make it look kind of like the trim on your jeans, I run a line of stitching on this side as well. Even though it's not necessary to stitch along this side, I just think it looks really nice and balanced. Let me show you what that looks like when it's nicely finished. So here you can see the stitching right along the edge both sides of that binding. I just think that that really finishes it off nicely. It looks really good from the front and that's fully finished by machine. You know, no hand stitching, which is gonna take a whole lot of time if you did wanna hand stitch it. And of course, you're probably wondering what it looks like on the back. And I don't think it looks bad on the back. I mean, of course, you can't control this side. So if your seam allowance was off and your binding was wiggly wobbly, then this could certainly be really wiggly wobbly. But if you've been really careful and have nice starched and pressed and stiff binding that's gonna be easy to control and your seam allowance is dead on accurate, then your stitching on the back is gonna look just as good as the stitching on the front. So here you can see our massive blocks put together in rows. And I mentioned at the beginning that you might have to do a little bit of fiddling and fudging in order to line up where you have the rows coming together. So I wanted to just talk through that. I've gone on ahead and attached my binding. So this is the exact same process to attach rows as it is to attach blocks. We've got the one inch back binding. We've got the quilt, which is that entire length of row. And then we've got the folded one and a half inch front binding. And I've already attached that, sewn it on, and folded over that back binding. So now I'm gonna flip over my next row that this is gonna attach to. And this is on a big scale. <laughs> so you just have to, you know, spread it out over a tabletop and give yourself a little bit of room to spread out and take a look at these joins. I'm gonna focus in on this one. So here's row two, I flipped it over and now I'm lining up that binding strip from the first row with the second row. So those are right on top of one another and you can kind of pinch the and fold over the front binding just to double check that those binding pieces are lined up just exactly right. And now pin and you're gonna be pinning the back binding to the second row. That's what you're gonna be stitching through with that second line of stitching. And I like to pin to both sides of that binding strip and that ensures that it's not gonna slip. And then I've got another join right here, just further down. And the nice thing is there's only two joins per row because it's only nine blocks to put this quilt together. So I'm just going to line this up and pin this join the exact same way. So take your time on this, you know, it's just a matter of lining it up and pinning. And then as you stitch it, you know, if the center blocks are a little bit off, you know, you might have to wiggle and play with it a little bit as you're running this line of stitching. So the next step from here is just to line this up and stitch down quarter inch seam allowance, stitching the back binding to the second row. Then you'll fold it out just like we did before fold over that top binding and stitch it down either by hand or by machine. And here's what it looks like whenever you finish the hugs and kisses quilt. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned a lot about quilt as you go and you're ready to give this technique a try. Now, if you'd like to find two awesome quilt as you go projects, you can find hugs and kisses and marvelous mosaic, two quilt as you go quilts in the book, Explore Walking Foot Quilting with Leah Day. So come and check out this book at leahday.com walk. Of course, if you have any questions about this quilting tutorial, please ask in the comments below. I really want to help you be able to make beautiful quilts on your home machine. If you enjoyed this video, of course, please like it, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel on YouTube so you don't miss the next videos coming out soon. And any of the tools and supplies that you saw me using in this video, you can probably find them in my quilt shop. Come and check it out at leahday.com shop. Until next time, let's go quilt.